very bright. Um, here we go. So I just thought I'd open this. This is a, a quote that a guy I used to work with said to me once. And I'm quite amused by the fact that we've had lots of death by PowerPoint references and bit talks about failure. And I managed to put that up as my first slide. It's quite a depressing thing. So what he said to me was, you're not truly developing unless you'd rather be dead than be in your current situation. Now, I used to think that was a pretty over-the-top statement. But to be honest, as I stand here in the spotlight, probably <coughs> following one of the most inspirational and the most entertaining TED Talks that we've got, I'm really beginning to actually feel a little bit more now. But anyway, <laughs> it was really about you know, sort of setting the scene for what I want to talk about today, and it's really, which is around, during our lives, the periods of our time when we're probably developing the most as humans are the times when we are absolutely the most uncomfortable. And the reason for that is because I believe that we really make transformational leaps in our own personal development and our own personal growth when we're placing ourselves in contexts that are absolutely new to us. Now, that's not going to be news to any of you here today, yeah? Because we've all gone through these huge life changes at different points. So I guess for a lot of the people in the room today, the most relevant <coughs> one at the moment might be that time when you left school and you started university. So you had to move away from sort of the comfort and the security of your school routine, of your family, of your home, and immerse yourself in this totally different world. Where you might have had a new home, you know, where you would have had maybe new flatmates, where you'll have to start cooking for yourself, doing your washing, managing a budget, going out and socialising, making new friends, you know, and maybe squeezing in some studying as well. <laughs> now, the reality of it is we've all managed to get in the room today and sit down, so I think we've all managed to get through the upheaval of that, and actually we're doing all right, you know. But I ask you, are you the same person that you were when you left school? Well, of course you're not. None of us are. Uh, you know, be that someone who left school a few months ago, a few years ago, or in some of our cases, many years ago. Um, we've all grown and we've changed. And that's because by immersing ourselves in these different worlds and working with different people in different environments and taking on different responsibilities, we've added to everything that we were and we've grown into someone totally different. Now, a lot of that will have been really good fun, and a lot of it will absolutely not remotely have been good fun, and none of it will have had anything to do with what we studied at university or what, we, you know, what we've been learning or whatever job we may have gone into. And that's the difference between sort of developing a behaviour as opposed to learning about knowledge. And the, rea the reality of it is, as we all go forward in our lives, our personal effectiveness, both as leaders and as followers, which are equally important, <coughs> is going to be defined by what, how you behave, not by what you know. Okay. So when we're younger, life throws all these changes at us pretty quickly. So we have lots and lots and lots of opportunities to grow and be in different contexts and be in different environments. But as we get older, that tails off quite a lot. You know, if we settle into our careers, into our relationships, into family life, you know, and all those things that make up our personal identity. But every now and again, something will come along that gives you a bit of a jump start and actually ends up presenting itself as a huge learning opportunity. Just think of what Ben was talking about in his non-adventure, you know. So, for me, several years ago, I moved out to Spain to help set up and run a small outdoors holiday business. I do quite a lot of work in the outdoors. And I was so super excited about it. A brilliant challenge, brilliant project. I just couldn't wait to get out there and get on with it. But once I got there, I realised that I was absolutely and totally the odd one out. And this actually had nothing to do with being a pasty ginger Scot in the depths of Spain, <laughs> which would be fairly obvious, I guess. But actually more about the fact that the edges of my world stopped far short of the world that I'd actually moved into. So my great plan had been when I went out there, you know, once I sort of settled in, I would start meeting a couple of the other small operators that were working there and have nice reasonable conversations with them about the kind of company that we were going to run and the kind of holidays we would offer and the client base that we were targeting, all of which were very different from people that were already out there. So great, reasonable, happy plan. This is going to be fab. But needless to say, <laughs> One of the people that were already out there really, really wasn't happy with this sort of bold new pretender just turning up on his turf. And all of that came to a head one afternoon when me and my business partner were, were sat in the local bar uh, having our afternoon coffee and then he walked and just 
ripped into us, tearing strips off us about what awful people we were, how we were taking food out of children's mouths, the whole lot, you know, right in front of half the village, and the whole really, really aggressively, really uncomfortable. And I don't mind admitting at that point, I would absolutely rather have died than be where I was at the time. It was just idiot. And I was really distraught about it, really, really mystified, because I had no norms to go back to. You know, I'd come from this world where, generally, people are quite reasonable to each other. You know, you, have, you butt heads now and again, but if people are a bit difficult, there's usually a way of dealing with it, or routes you can take. And I just had absolutely no idea what to do. And on a personal level, I also had to face up to the guilt that, despite the fact it was unintentional, and despite the fact that his, his behaviour was really quite unpleasant and unfair, Somehow or another, I had managed to upset someone to that degree, which for me was a really difficult place to be. But at the end of the day, I had nothing else I could do. I couldn't run away, because that kind of meant giving up, up on my dream completely. I couldn't hide from him, because we were both in a village of about 200 people. You know, so I just had to tough it out in the end. And believe me, there were at times it was absolutely beyond uncomfortable. But now, you know, this is now several years ago, and I look back on it now as a real gift. I know that's quite... A hard thing to translate to but it wasn't a gift that I wanted and it really isn't a gift I would want again to be honest but to be t the reality is you know I, by admitting my ignorance and understanding that I just no concept of how something that was so important to me was going to actually affect other people I became a totally different person I built on everything that I had and just developed beyond recognition yeah, I developed my resilience. I managed to sort of stay firm in the face of something that I believed. My critical thinking changed completely. Now, all the, obviously, oh, of course this will happen. Oh, that'll be fine. You're gone forever. You're, everything is now questioned and examined before I make a decision. And I'm so much more empathic to other people. I've become a much gentler person because there's nothing like being so forced to look at someone else's point of view to make sure that you're going to consider it next time around. So by placing myself in a completely different context, I had a transformational leap in my own personal development, both as a leader and as a follower. So if that's what you can achieve by accident, I started thinking, well, OK, what if you put a bit of positive intent behind this? And actually, rather than these things coming along by circumstance, you made a conscious decision to go out and get involved in something and develop yourself from it. So I sort of thought about you know, endurance athletes and the discomfort they suffer when they're training and how they go out of their way to actually embrace the pain and discomfort because they know it's making them physically stronger, it's developing their body. And the pain, so the pain and discomfort that they feel, we never ever think of that as failure when an athlete's in training and they're saying they're sore and they're aching. We always think of it that they're growing stronger. So what if you could apply that philosophy to our minds, to our emotions, to our behaviours, and to all our other sort of personal capabilities, and recognise that discomfort doesn't mean you're failing, it means you're getting stronger. What could you do with that? So this sort of understanding and starting to think around this took me to the next stage in my career, and a big part of that is about leading developmental expeditions overseas. And the expeditions that I lead are deliberately designed to give personal growth and challenge to young people, to help them grow, you know, to help them develop themselves as people. So when we go off an expedition, there may be about two years in the making. Uh, you know, it's mostly school groups that I work with, sometimes adults, but mostly schools. Um, and the school group will be given total ownership of the expedition. They'll be involved in budgeting for it, they'll be involved in raising funds, they'll be involved in planning their itinerary. And then when we're out in country, which will be about four to five weeks, we would have a leader from the student group in place every couple of days that we would rotate through. So everyone in the group is leading a team of their peers for a few days. So last year I was lucky enough to lead a school called Balwiri Academy uh, from Kirkcaldy. I don't know if any of you know it. Um, it's a school I've worked with before and a school I really enjoy working with because the teachers are great, all the setup is fantastic. And last year we went out to Mongolia together. Right, that works. So what we've got here um, is a really typical expedition photograph. Yeah, it's just a, just a snapshot, nothing particularly significant. And what we have is Sally and Sophie, who are our two leaders um, for, the, for the next sort of few days. 
Uh, and that's the rest of the team sort of looking on, somewhat disinterested and bored. Um, and we're in a town called Muran, uh, which is an, a really isolated town up in northern Mongolia. And we're in the local market buying cooking equipment for the next few weeks. Because on these kind of trips, we're kind of cooking and camping for ourselves on an open fire, sort of every night for four to five weeks. And the, so that's the task of the day, is to buy our cooking equipment. And I think it's safe to say that when we look at this photograph, when we look at our pasty Scottish schools kids, uh, once again, everything in this environment, everything in this context is going to be new to them. You know, the language, the environment, <coughs> the location, the culture, even the way that you buy things is completely different. And most significantly, I believe, for Sally and Sophie, and they're going to kill me for saying this because I'm still in touch with all these guys, is you know, that highly visible, highly responsible role that they've been given to look after that team of their peers and have to make decisions <coughs> on their behalf. And so what I love about it is, for all of us who are a little bit older and settled, I think this photograph really, really demonstrates how uncomfortable doing something new really feels. I mean, look at the body language. You know, Sophie's got her hand up at her mouth. Sally's got her notebook clutched to her chest. You know, eyes looking at anywhere except the people that they're supposed to be communicating with. That own horrible little place that we've all had to be in sometimes. However, what we're actually looking at is true... Look, back a bit. <laughs> well, what we're actually looking at is true transformational development happening for these two young women. You know, that horrible, awkward, uncomfortable situation is changing their reality forever. These two women are 16 years old and they're off transacting something like that, at the end, literally at the end of the world, and being able to look after themselves and their team. You know, that's, you know, their reality has just grown tenfold. So I guess the next question is how can we actually translate that to something meaningful? So this isn't just a story that I tell you and it becomes something that anybody can do if you so desire. And the good news is you don't need to go and buy cooking equipment in Mongolia or get shouted at in a bar in Spain to have a really transformational you know, learning experience. You can actually start right now, today. And for me, I would encourage every single person in this room who wants to have a massive spurt in their personal growth to jumpstart the process by going and immersing yourself in something that is 100% new to you and 100% uncomfortable. So that jumpstart is going to take you right to the edge of your capability. And not only that, it's going to show you a whole new world of stuff that goes on out there that right now you have no idea even exists. By going and meeting new people, putting yourself in a new environment, maybe starting a course or a club or a new hobby. It doesn't need to be dramatic. It can be anything that puts you somewhere different. Or go and visit somewhere that makes you a little bit uncomfortable, be that a foreign city, or it could even be a library or a care home at the end of your street. Volunteer somewhere. Do anything that makes you feel a little bit antsy and uncomfortable. Because what that's going to do is open a whole new reality to you. And when you do it, go there with a truly open mind and do it with a really positive intention of developing and growing into someone different. You know, don't be dismissive of what you see. You know, leave your arrogance at home. Don't assume that you know better because you actually know different. Different isn't always better. And it can be really hard to let go of that when you're faced with things that are totally different from your norms. You know, and be challenged on those norms and welcome it. You know, and get really, really uncomfortable. Because what I would say, Discomfort, it doesn't mean you're growing. It, yes, it does. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, was, thank you. Um, you know, discomfort doesn't mean you're failing. It means that you're growing. And it's exactly the same as you did when you left school. So, thank you.